Well, this should be kind of fun, shouldn't it? Yeah, I, I thought I would, I guess, share my massive, incredible Christmas book haul with you all. Yeah, I mean, some of these are still in the packaging, so I think it might be fun to have an element of mystery. I, I know that um, book hauls are a little bit like contentious right now and I totally, I totally understand why. I personally still like them specifically for what I'm trying to do with this channel. They call me crazy, but I kind of feel like I have sort of unique taste in books compared to a lot of the rest of booktube. So I, I feel like if you're watching this channel, book hauls are kind of valuable because like I read a lot of like older books like it's not like I am only reading stuff that you can walk into Barnes and Noble and get. I read a lot of stuff where it's like you you basically like have to order it online or be lucky enough to find it in a used bookstore. I'm probably exposing people via these hauls to a lot of titles that they would, and therefore ideas. Ideas and forms of writing and yada 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 that is not very in fashion right now and titles that um, they would not otherwise have heard of. I feel like people don't really like talk about that with book hauls a lot, but for people who have sort of unconventional, unconventional, like less consumerist reading tastes, hauls can be a little more of an opportunity for people to find out about new books they wouldn't otherwise have known about. So, I mean, that's, that's something I would love to introduce to this conversation. Are book hauls only as consumerist as the people who are making them? And also, here's the other thing is I feel like it's a super nice preview for you, the viewer, to get, especially if you follow me on Goodreads, um, to know what the up and coming potential content on this channel is going to be like, because I do like make videos about the books that I haul. Like I do actually read through everything that I haul before I go and further like buy more books. So a book haul is a really nice kind of preview as to like what is coming next on this channel. So I feel like it's beneficial in that way too, at least in the way that like I do this channel. And it's also a really good way to kind of um, decide if your reading tastes are compatible with mine. So it's really easy to get kind of a summary of the or range of books that you're going to be exposed to on my channel to just click on one of my haul videos and, you know, look at the books that I am reading and reviewing. I don't know. I'm not trying to be like book haul defender uh, number one. Uh, th this is not that because frankly, I, I can't stand to watch uh, book hauls myself. Um, but it's mostly because I just despise most of booktube's, like, taste. Okay, so I think I'm gonna save... Well, maybe let's do one of these thrift books first. Um, and let's just get right fucking into this shit. How was everyone's holidays, by the way? Were they good? Uh, mine were incredibly chaotic, but, uh, good overall. Um, you know, I really can't complain. There are so many people who have it so much worse than me, and frankly, I used to have it so much worse than me now, so no matter how bad things are, I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm just like, well, but this isn't the bad ending. <laughs> this is not the way that I thought Christmas would... What the hell? Uh-oh, wait. Uh-oh. Oh, no! <laughs> this is Victor's. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no, is this not even mine? Okay, this one is mine. Oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Victor, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I thought they sent me the wrong... I was so confused. Um... I thought they sent me the wrong book. This is, okay, so this is a very special occasion. Um, this is the, I'm doing a book haul for Victor too. So this is the, the book that Victor got himself recently. Anyway, 
that is not scripted, by the way. That actually really just happened. Oops. Moving on. So this first one is um, edible wild plants. Um, so I've been wanting to get more into like identifying plants in the wilderness um, because I read braiding sweetgrass um, a while ago and it really affected me. And um, something that that author talks about is like being able to walk into like a forest or a wild space and know the name of every single thing that's around you and being completely immersed in your surroundings in that way. Um, and that's something that I really, really would love to start getting into. Um, I really want to start being able to fully immerse myself in my surroundings when I'm outside. And uh, frankly, I just think that those are such important skills to have. It is really incredible and touching and empowering to be able to go outside and know which plants are your friends um, and how they can be used and which plants are going to kill you. Um, and also eventually, um, I want to grow a lot of my old, uh, my own food and something I would love to do would be to be able to cultivate things that are native to the area that I end up settling in, um, and then eating those. And so really, really having like a supernatural organic diet where I'm consuming things that literally belong to the land that I'm on. It has really, really, um, beautiful images, uh, and pictures and Honestly, the food just, I mean, it looks freaking delicious. Super excited for that. I wish it was a little less heavy though, because I know that's going to be a pain in the ass in my backpack. Um, all right. The next thing that I got was Identity by Mithu Sanyal. Um, Y'all already know I've been losing faith in uh, literary fiction recently. And Acts of Service, which I read recently, did kind of reignite it a little bit, but I've been losing faith in literary fiction. And this is one of the last literary fictions that I have on my TBR, and I'm terrified to read it. I think it's either going to be really, really good or unbearable. <laughs> and so I'm hoping that it's clever. I'm hoping it says something new that has not been said already on Twitter. Um, I'm hoping that it's funny and kind of, I'm hoping for a little bit of edge from this and I'm crossing my fingers that it delivers. This is about a doctoral student and a blogger who is in awe of her supervisor, who is a post-colonial and race studies professor. And then it turns out that the professor who was passing for Indian for most of her life, it sounds like, finds out that she's white. And this turns this blogger and doctoral student's world upside down and it challenges all of her conceptions about culture and um, identity and race and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is also a translated book and that's kind of something that makes me have a little more hope for it. Um, I think literary fiction in other countries is doing a lot better with nuance and kind of edginess and being actually interesting and challenging and weird uh, than it is in the U.S. Like, I think the U.S. has really just sunk into a lot of preachiness and puritanicalness and stuff that's not very good. So I'm crossing my fingers that this is funny and edgy and good and fucking interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, we'll see how it turns out. The The next thing that I have is The Coddling of the American Mind by Greg Lukianoff and Jonathan Haidt. And this is kind of talking about, like, the current state of, like, American universities, basically. So it's talking a lot about um, free speech on campuses, kind of this, like, McCarthyist culture that a lot of, like, colleges are living in right now, basically. Also, it addresses rates of depression and anxiety, skyrocketing within university settings, so basically, it's just going to talk about the social trends that have contributed to creating this kind of environment. It looks like they're hypothesizing that it's fearful parenting, uh, social media, and political polarization and dysfunction that are the primary causes that they're going to address. What I'm hoping to get out of this is something that I haven't thought about before because I feel like, honestly, I might be reading this one too late. I feel like I have a decent grip on what has caused the current university environment. 
So what I'm crossing my fingers with is that the authors can tell me something that I don't know. And then the next thing that I have, this is the oldest book on my entire TBR. And by oldest, I mean it's been on my TBR the longest. So this is the bottom of the list, the one that I've been putting off reading for the longest. This is Rosalind Miles's The Women's History of the World. And that's pretty much what it is. The next one I actually kind of forgot like what it is. This is Breaking Bread with the Dead, A Reader's Guide to a More Tranquil Mind. Um, and I like, I, I actually like don't know what this is. Um, I, I remember being excited when I added it to my TBR. I don't remember what it is and I'm not really getting uh, a whole lot from the back. So I don't know. We'll see. This is a little bit of a wild card, I guess. We've got a classic here. I have Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Um, this one is also one that has been on my TBR for just for fucking ever. And yeah, I mean, I don't know a ton about it. Um, I have never ever read Sylvia Plath before. So this will be a super special experience. And then for the secret books, I've got three more. First I have, um, this is like dyeing my fingers blue. The, the Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. And this is about this guy who is a literary apothecary. He has a floating bookstore and a barge on the uh, sign, same? He prescribes novels for the hardships of life and he uses this skill to mend broken hearts and souls. But the only person he can't seem to heal is himself because he's haunted by heartbreak after his great love disappeared. She left him with only a letter that he has never opened. Um, and it's just about uh, him hopefully finding happiness and making peace with his loss and discovering the end of that love story. Oh my God, the print is giant on this. Well, that will be a nice break from all of this heavier reading. I also got a copy of William Blake's The Marriage of Heaven and Hell in full color. I wrote about this uh, last semester uh, and I really enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite things that I read, frankly. It's just got some really beautiful, I mean, yeah, beautiful, beautiful um, color uh, printings of the actual marriage. So you can see. Every time I think I understand it fully, there's just like new stuff. If you don't know about the marriage of heaven and hell, so this is it's like a like a treatise, and it's basically uh, Blake. It's from the Romantic period. Period. So think William Wordsworth and. Samuel Coleridge and all of that jazz. And it's basically um, a treatise uh, against organized religion and for art is I guess like how, how I would describe it. Uh, like the only true religion is art. Yeah, I mean, the back of this describes it as a humorous satire on religion and morality. Then the last thing that I got, oh my god, I didn't realize that this was this big. Oh god. All right. Um, well, first of all, it's this big. Uh, this is Aztec by Gary Jennings. <laughs> I actually don't really know what this is. Mm, it's about an Aztec scribe who becomes a warrior and then becomes a traveling merchant and he gets to kind of explore all over the world, I guess. God, this is really, I thought this was gonna be like 300 pages. This is literally a thousand pages long. What have I gotten myself into? Wow, I am not gonna, I, Christ, I'm not gonna have to buy books for like months. Yeah, anyway. Um, this is the, the final, the final haul. Leave me a comment, uh, which of these books you're the most interested in, uh, which excites you the most, um, and yeah, I mean, you can look forward to me, except for The Marriage of Heaven, Heaven and Hell, which I've already read, but look forward to me 
reading these on Goodreads. You can follow me. I um I hope you have enjoyed this little haul. I hope I've given you kind of an interesting taste of the kind of stuff that I read on this channel. I have little sweet things like the Little Paris Bookshop, um, kind of esoteric nonfiction like Breaking Bread with the Dead, sort of spicy stuff like The Coddling of the American Mind. I have feminist stuff, uh, i.e. women's history of the world, literary fiction, um, sustainability, kind of green living eco stuff like the edible wild plants, historical fiction fiction like Aztec and classics like The Marriage of Heaven and Hell and The Bell Jar. So um, that's pretty much what I like to read. Um, you also see a lot of kind of more, um, more kind of uh, obscure classics, uh, which you can usually tell that I'm reading them for class. That is it. I hope you have a happy new year and that is it from me for this video. So I will see you very soon. Bye.